Just a few announcements. As you know, we have um, the new restrictions placed upon us, so we can only have 10 people in the church at a time. We're not permitted to have public masses, but we will continue to have community services on Sundays from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. You don't need to sign in. You just need to show up. Well, you don't need to pre-register, rather. You need to just show up and, and sign in when you arrive. Also, uh, we are experimenting with uh, live streaming. So we're doing the entire mass. Uh, we had discussed it before and we thought we would just do it for Sundays, but we're trying to perfect it. So every now and then we have little uh, difficulties. So, so we're trying to work on that. And we'll see how it goes. And if people like it, we might continue to do it on a regular basis. In regards to today's gospel reading, notice um, this event that takes place right after our Lord uh, performs the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and the fish. So his disciples go off in the boat to the other side. He remains behind, but he walks across the water, if you recall, and he joins the, the disciples in the boat. And then the people, they're looking for our Lord. They don't know where he is. They eventually go to the other side and they ask, you know, how did you get here? But notice our Lord's response. He says, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. So it's something for us to ponder. So they were looking for our Lord, but their motive or their reason for looking for our Lord was the wrong one. And this is what our Lord is trying to get at. And this is something that we should think about in our own lives also. In other words, why do we seek the Lord? Now, yes, most of us are probably good at practicing topics, so hopefully our motive is much better than it is for many people. But you know, as Catholics, we recite a lot of prayers. I'm sure all of us have, have devotions, you know, the Rosary, the Divine Mercy Chapter, the prayers that we know off by heart, some, some prayers of adoration, praise, thanksgiving. All of these are, are excellent and very important. But when it comes to personal things, what is the thing that people ask for most often or the types of things that people ask for most often? So often we ask for things that we need pertaining to this world. So whether it's to get a new job, um, maybe for, for young people, maybe they're praying to, to meet someone, to, to get married. Um, but a lot of people also ask for, you know, heal me of this ailment or this sickness or, or cure my loved ones or, or um, you know, get this, these bad people out of my life, people who are harassing me or bothering me. In other words, most of the things that we ask for, the petitions we ask for, pertain to this work. It's not necessarily wrong to ask for these things. It is good to ask for these things. But is this the only types of things that we are asking for? I remember reading um, about St. Andre Bisset, a uh, great Canadian saint, as you know, he died in uh, 1937, and thousands of miracles occurred through his, his uh, intercession while he was alive, all of which he attributed to St. Joseph, of course. But he, he, he commented that, you know, so many people come to him with their problems, with their ailments, but it's all worldly. And he says he's just amazed that nobody ever comes to him knowing that he's a great miracle worker, able to obtain God's graces. Nobody comes to him asking for the virtue of humility. Say, don't you please help me to be truly humble. Or nobody comes to him asking, you know, Lord, or, or Saint says, um, Blessed Andre, help me to, to love God wholeheartedly. In other words, we don't tend to ask for spiritual things, things that are extremely beneficial in regards to our relationship with God, which means it's going to be beneficial for our eternal salvation. In regards to um, these petitions that we ask for our attitude towards the things of this world, I had mentioned how some people, they even abandon their relationship with God because something bad happens to them. You know, they faithful Catholics pray all the time, something bad happens to them or one of their loved ones, and they ask God to fix the problem, you know, uh, 
or, or if their loved one is dying, they pray that their loved one doesn't die. And when their loved one dies, they just stop praying. They, they stop coming to church for a long time. And then if they're so focused on the things of this world, it's almost like we make God into our servant and we make ourselves into God. So um, St. Jean-Marie Vianney says, you know, for example, when it comes to suffering, we should ask not so much to be relieved of the suffering, but for the grace to be able to bear those sufferings, especially if it's sufferings that we cannot avoid. So this is very important. Even in regards to confession, it's been pointed out by spiritual authors that most people go to confession because of the fear of hell. So nobody wants to go to hell. It's a good reason, good motive, but they point out that the ideal attitude should be because we have offended God and we love him so much that we want to repair the damage that our sins have caused in regards to our relationship with him. We can extend this principle even in regards to human relationships. Think, for example, of a young couple who are getting married. Um, marriage is, is a beautiful occasion. I often remind the couples at the marriage that, you know, true love is not based on, it's not based on the good that you see in the other or what you can get from it. So couples are initially attracted because of physical appeal, possibly some, some sex appeal. They enjoy each other's company or he makes them laugh or whatever. And it's kind of like what you can get from the person, how being with that person benefits you. So that might be the initial stages of a relationship, which is not necessarily wrong. But true love has to go beyond that. True love is the commitment to be there for that person, whether you receive any benefits from that person or not. And this is a kind of love that parents have for their children. They will love their children no matter what, even if their children rebel, even if their children become drug addicts, God forbid that that should happen, the parents will always love their child because they know it's their child. And so the parents have this commitment to to always try to help their child. And you see, this is the attitude that married couples should have towards each other. Or even young persons who are pursuing a relationship, they should love the person for themselves, not so much because of what they can get from the person. So when, when this attitude is present in, in marriage, when there is true love present, when each one wants what is best for the other, the, the mutual fulfillment takes place because each one is willing to lay down his or her life for the other. And it's, it's very beautiful when that takes place. And this is also why, you know, as Catholics, we are called to see human beings as created in the image of God and, and to, to honor them as, as we would Christ. You know, remember Christ saying, whatever you have done to the least of these, my brethren, you have done it on to me. So when someone is true Christian, when they're true Catholic, they should have this attitude, especially towards their spouse. Now imagine someone who's an atheist or someone who doesn't understand this principle. It's going to be a lot harder for them to have this self-sacrificial kind of attitude towards another person, which means that their marriages are less likely to work. And this is also why traditionally Catholics were, were encouraged only to marry Catholics. But just because you marry a Catholic, it doesn't mean that the person will have the right attitude. So this is something all of us need to work on. What is our attitude in regards to human relationships? Do we only uh, pursue those relationships where we gain something from those relationships? When it comes to family, of course, because it's family, it's different because there's that commitment. But the idea is that we love each person because they are created in the image of God. And when it comes to our relationship with God, As I mentioned, what are the things that we are asking for, praying for? And we should pray for those things that are truly beneficial for us for all eternity. Now, it is true that to a certain extent, we do pray these things, especially when we pray the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer. But a lot of people just recite the prayer without much thought. So we pray for God's will to be done in our lives which means we are willing to accept God's will no matter what it entails, whether it entails suffering or persecution or whatever it may be. And we pray for his kingdom to come, which means we want to 
make the effort to spread his kingdom here on earth. So we should take these petitions more fully to heart. And if we do this, we're probably going to be more likely to have our prayers answered. And we will definitely grow in goodness and love, not just for God, but for everyone around us. Thanks, thank you.